At NOAA's National Severe Storms Laboratory, our mission is to observe, understand, and predict severe weather. It's so inspiring to think about the rich history of our laboratory and the amazing accomplishments that we've had. Founded in 1964, the earliest days of the NOAA National Severe Storms Laboratory were focused on aviation and how severe weather forecasting could better protect aircraft from the impacts of turbulence, lightning, and other hazards. By flying around, and more importantly through, thunderstorms, NSSL pushed the boundaries of science on two frontiers, meteorology and aviation. Project Rough Rider led to improved aviation safety guidelines that are still used by commercial aircraft today. From those brave souls quite literally riding the storms, to the scientists on the ground, finding the origins and the why behind thunderstorms and tornadoes has always been at the heart of NSSL's focus. To sharpen that picture, NSSL began experimenting with Doppler radar to observe storms. Within two years of getting their surplus U.S. Air Force radar up and running, NSSL made a groundbreaking discovery when on May 24th of 1973, a large tornado struck the town of Union City, mere miles from the lab. The Union City tornado was where we first observed a tornadic vortex signature 10 to 15 minutes before the tornado actually developed and enabled us to understand that we could use Doppler radar to issue tornado warnings in advance of the tornado actually developing. And then from there, that provided a lot of justification for research that went into what became the WSR ADD network uh, with Doppler radar across the entire country. And it's still to this day looked at as the gold standard for what radar networks should look like for the world. NSSL continued to work to improve radar technology and in the mid-1980s made yet another leap forward with the development of dual polarization. Dual pole technologies really led to tremendously improved uh, rainfall estimation and also uh, gave us a lot more information about the shape and orientation of the hydrometeors in the atmosphere, which leads to better predictions of hail, better predictions potentially of downbursts in the future. And if we have a tornado debris signature, we know we have a very strong tornado that could last for a long time, which improves confidence for downstream warnings. NSSL was not done improving the quality of weather radar data. In the early 2000s, the lab obtained a phased array radar from the U.S. Navy. The SPY-1 marked the beginning of the phased array era of the lab's radar research and an effort to yet again push radar data quality to the next level. Phase ray radar allows you to scan the atmosphere much more quickly in the vertical and get updates from storms in an adaptive way to where we can look at that particular storm many more times versus having to wait for the scan to come back around. Today, NSSL scientists are actively testing, iterating, and perfecting phased array radar. The Advanced Technology Demonstrator, a rotating, dual-pole phased array radar installed in 2018, is allowing lab scientists to prepare PAR for radar next and operational use. But there's far more to storm observations than radar. Since its inception, NSSL has been getting out of the lab and into the field to get up close and personal with tornadoes and severe weather. So whether it's tornadoes, lightning, hail, wind, flash floods, you really have to have ground truth and the observations from the phenomena to be able to figure out what's going on and how to better forecast and warn for it. The lab's field observation efforts made a historical leap in the 1990s with the Vortex project. This pioneering effort saw dozens of vehicles and teams deployed with a common scientific objective to understand tornado genesis, and was at the time the largest observational field experiment to date. The lab built on that historic success with Vortex 2 nearly 15 years later and continues to grow its field observation capabilities and efforts today with the advent of Vortex Southeast and now Vortex USA. So as we continued to study tornadoes, it became apparent that tornadoes in the southeastern United States actually cause more damage and injure and kill more people, unfortunately, every year. So Vortex Southeast was started to really focus on looking at that problem. And another big difference is that now we started to bring in the social and behavioral scientists to understand how people respond to tornado warnings, what kind of information they would like and how, how far in advance of a tornado they would like it to make it useful. So Vortex has changed from just going out and looking at storms and gathering data to this, this big broad uh, campaign to do that plus understand how people respond. And so we feel like we've really learned a lot about some of the environmental and some of the things that occur in the individual thunderstorms that produce these tornadoes in the southeast that are going to be able to
to be used by the Weather Service and our partners to be able to produce better warnings. Better warnings. That's ultimately the goal of our NOAA partners at the National Weather Service and a focus for NSSL scientists. We know an accurate and long lead time warning is only effective if the person on the receiving end understands it and knows what actions to take. In recent years, we've done research in NOAA's hazardous weather testbed and in the field after significant tornado events to better understand how not only the public, but core partners of the National Weather Service like emergency managers utilize tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings to make decisions which get people into shelters, enable people to take their protective actions. That research is very useful uh, for a number of reasons. One is because we're able to test tools with the people who will be using them in operations, and so it ensures that that tool is going to be useful and usable. Uh, another reason why is because some of the tools that we're producing are going to be communicated to different communities across our nation. And understanding how people interpret different communications is very important. And by understanding how people utilize the warnings of today, it enables us to better design the warning system of the future. The warning system of the future may be based on forecasts rather than the current system of warning on observations. By using computer modeling, NSSL scientists are pushing the boundaries of what is possible by creating warning lead times of up to 90 minutes. Started in 2007 as a potential moonshot idea, the Warn on Forecast project is revolutionizing severe weather warnings and alerts. So today we have a Warn on Forecast system that has proven useful for a number of different applications, including flash flooding, tornadoes, high wind events, and hail. Forecasters have been using it since 2017 in experimental fashion. It's about to be transitioned for demonstration with the National Weather Service. And we recently won a gold medal for this innovation. From radar and field observations to modeling, hydrology, social science, and everything in between, NSSL is using the tools and technologies of the future to push the boundaries of our understanding of tornadoes and severe weather. The National Severe Storms Laboratory is crucial to our nation. The number of really intense storms, whether they be floods or tornadoes, are increasing. Some places are seeing threats they have not seen before. So being able to have experts who can study those events, produce tools to help us protect our life and property enhance the economy is critical. With AI, with better understanding of social science, we're really on a new frontier of being able to understand uh, how severe weather impacts uh, society and be able to better prepare, warn, and mitigate against that. When I think about the future, I think about all of the exciting things that are coming our way in terms of technological advances, but I also think about the people and their passion and their dedication to the NSSL mission. And I can't wait to see where we go over the next 60 years.